Aspect ratio is the window of which we view audiovisual media through. Like any tool used by filmmakers, it holds an artistic value. Though it is something that has changed and advanced through the years along with our technological evolution, it is most often used as an artistical choice of how to present a story to an audience. More so in these times as the tools for telling audiovisual stories has advanced to such a degree it has. A thing like aspect ratio has gained more value as an artistical choice and is not just chosen after the latest standard or trend. The first widescreen film shown in a the theater was Abel Gans's Napoleon, which came out in 1927. Napoleon was projected from three reels of silent film arrayed in a horizontal row, making a total aspect ratio of 4 by 1. This is the only film shown in this wide of a format and was way ahead of its time in 1927. It wasn't until 1953 the widescreen format truly came to life. Through those redheads from Seattle, Rhonda Fleming as the flaming redhead, Gene Barry as a fast moving gambling man, and Agnes Moorhead as the boss lady of those redheads from Seattle. Catherine! <laughs> Wings of the Hawk. Now, for a third rate general, you make an awful lot of noise. <laughs> and the robe. You will see the treachery spawned by a handful of silver. The day of Golgotha. The glory that was Rome. The invincible legions. The love that defied an empire. The torture of Demetrius, intrigue and revolt. Since these releases, films have moved towards a wider format for a larger and more immersive cinematic experience. It's able to show the physical scale of landscapes and cities much clearer than before. It also became the standard of cinema because cinema had to rise beyond TV which in the early 50s became really popular and common in the household. This period is known as Hollywood's war against television. Theaters had to offer something more to get people to step outside their living rooms, away from the TV and pay for something they could not get at home. One of the major solutions to the problem was of course to enlarge the scale of the canvas itself. There were also several other qualities that were improved, like image, sound, comfort, and the introduction of 3D cinema. 3D. Here from Nice comes the background story of the 20th Century Fox announcement that all their future productions will be made in three-dimensional films. Professor Kretjian, having recently brought his invention to perfection, received a visit from Mr. Spiris Curis, flying over from Hollywood with his technical advisor, Mr. Earl Sponnable. They saw the device, first of all, in a demonstration setup. The president of the big Hollywood corporation was greatly impressed and became convinced that this was the practical method of presenting the third dimension on the screen. Say, it's time for my favorite dance team, so let's look. Ah, a box of matches and a pack of old gold cigarettes. That's all you need, my friend. After TV had long ruled the 4x3 aspect ratio, the platform had a need to ascend further. The technology and the contents of TV started improving rapidly in the late 90s and early 2000s. You're watching News Channel 6, coverage you can count on. This is the time of the morning when we take a look at the latest gadgets and gizmos on the market. Gadgets and gizmos guru, Bud Myers and Bud, you brought in a couple of things. Big television. I can't believe how big the home systems have gotten. Do you want a big television? Scientists for years have said, we're going to give you a television that hangs on the wall. This is a big television, a couple inches thin. This is sitting on a stand, or you could take it off the stand, and you could hang it on the wall. And this is really less than 60 pounds. Something like this would be 250 to 300 pounds. Put it on a glass type of tape right here. This is a few inches that would hang on the wall. This is a flat screen. Get a big television these days, the tube is so heavy that it curves out under $10,000. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> well, but think about all the other technology. Bud, thank you so much for coming in. This is a mini you? disc. Can you believe this? Mm -hmm. So what we have here today is a disc. It's as big as a credit card. This is an incredible technology. Let's say you put seven tracks on there. Say I want track one to be track five and track five to be four. Say number two, we're tired of. Well, no problem. Yeah, we'll record over it and then find two minutes of empty tape on the other side and record again. Then you can get 
the portable unit. Thanks again. Big tall. And within 2010, TV had made a full transition into the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This pushed cinema to keep innovating new qualities that TV could not compete with. Qualities that would keep driving people to seek out and pay for the cinematic experience, despite the easy access of audiovisual media in the home. In the last few years, with the growth of internet and streaming services, it's been difficult for movie theaters to compete. Leading film studios in this time have therefore invested giant budgets into certain properties that have proved themselves to be hits, to create an exceptional scale to films that you won't see in TV series, of course with a few exceptions of late. But because of these giant investments in certain properties, taking the already big blockbuster movies to the next stage, the films that budget-wise would rank in between the independent film and the blockbusters have lately been shrinking. Films that would bank on talent rather than effects, period pieces that would not involve giant scale set pieces, more elegantly made character driven ensemble films where characters aren't dressed in latex suits and capes, films that would promote vision over property, something new over the already known. Of course, these films still exist, but they're few and they're mostly not making bank. <laughs> This transition is not all sad though, as independent cinema is rising to new heights, as more people are getting the chance to make films, their production of smaller budgeted studio and independent films have skyrocketed over the last decade. And since the economic risk is not as large with these projects, the space for experimentation and creativity is much greater. In the midst of this changing landscape of filmmakers, the beloved, almost extinct but not forgotten 4x3 aspect ratio has made somewhat of a comeback through several smaller films of late, including many of which have been rewarded with several awards and had great financial success. Since aspect ratio is a tool, it can be used for several different effects, depending on the context of individual films. Like for example, enhancing the experience of someone's narrow, claustrophobic or limited world. Somebody has to do something! Portraying a destructive person in a destructive world. Capturing the period in which the story takes place within. Is that all? Yes, no? I think this doesn't sell. Or helping with creating the aesthetics appropriate for the world being presented. I bequeath a painting known as Boy with Apple. Wow! What? Who's Gustav H? I'm afraid that's me, Donnie. Now, you could say the aspect ratio is the only common thread between all these different films, though I generally think the 4x3 ratio alone has the potential effect of elevating the mystic of the unknown simply because of the limited view. Humans view the world through a ratio closer to 16 by 9 more precisely 1.87 by 1 which is why the 4x3 aspect ratio creates a feeling of there being something more than what you see with your eye, a factor of the unknown. This is something that is also built by several other tools like light, sound, music, actors, pace, time and place. But there seems to be another common thread to all the more recently released films that are presented through the 4x3 aspect ratio. They all stand out amongst other films by promoting different cinematic values than what is currently the popular trend. Instead, the modern use of the 4x3 aspect ratio is often valuing similar traits to older cinema, as this is where it stems from. The format can unconsciously build an atmosphere to be more easily perceived as fear, wonder, curiosity, and much more, all dependent on the threads of choices made by the filmmaker in combination with the viewer's relationship to the world being presented, which together creates the unique experience of a film. This is of course relevant to all films, but with the 4x3 aspect ratio, there is also always more of an unknown presence. Like looking through the curtains 
something is withheld from us. And where there is more than we are shown, we build on what is not there with our imagination. This gives the viewer a stronger individual experience as we are applying something of our own to it. This is one of the many reasons why a film like Grand Budapest Hotel can seem so much grander than it in reality is. Granted, most of this interpretation lies in the narration, the sets, costumes, miniatures, actors and so on. But amongst these other tools, the aspect ratio helps heighten the overall experience created. Aware or not, we perceive the 4x3 aspect ratio like wearing blinders. We're peeking. Because of the feeling of peeking into a world, it puts you in the position of an observer rather than trying to put you inside the story. This is a perspective that can be a lot more powerful to the viewer than the latter, simply because of the lack of control the viewer has within any cinematic experience. The atmospheric effect could be compared to the scene in Blue Velvet. When Jeffrey Beaumont peeks through the blinders of the closet he is locked inside to observe two strangers in an even stranger situation, bringing an absurd world to life and the character's reality. In Blue Velvet we are shown this absurd and strange underworld through the perspective of the main character. So when the young and very innocent but curious Heineken loving Jeffrey is peeking through the closet blinders, we're right there with him, inside the closet just as confused about what we were witnessing and just as scared as Jeffrey to be caught. Hello? Yes, sir? Frank? Frank, let me talk to him. Please, Frank. Sir. I like to sing Blue Velvet. What a film presents through the limited 4x3 view can certainly be felt like peeking through the blinders from a dark closet. Excuse me? Uh-huh. The police are here. They asked for you. Tell them I'll be right there. Okay. Used right, the aspect ratio can be a great tool to strengthen the film. And it's really fortunate we are at a point now where some bigger films are experimenting with the use of aspect ratio and that filmmakers are being flexible with their choices. I see this as films being less constrained by the times and more open to all possible tools available. It's certainly something that's embracing the movements towards widening the spectra of films being made. The now more common use of the 4x3 aspect ratio is not just about being open to the use of different aspect ratios, but being open open to a film's choice or presentation and stretch the possibilities of artistic choices made to strengthen the film's presentation, leading to a stronger expression. There was something fishy. We never got the cause of death. She's been murdered. And you think I did it. It is really important for any art form to keep changing and expanding, and we should recognize those who are able to do this, to stay active and flexible and don't get stuck. So I think the main reason the 4x3 aspect ratio is having a so-called comeback is because of the very weird place of which cinema is in today. The landscape of cinema has always been a constantly changing landscape which has helped with keeping it alive and interesting. But today it's changing more than ever in all kinds of directions. The specter has widened to an extreme degree because of how much is now possible, which only keeps expanding because of how much has already been done, the large variety of influence because of the saturation, how many who's working and creating with an incredible range of different perspectives, and because of how many similar mediums that are constantly expanding, both influenced by and influencing cinema as well. Rules and boundaries are satisfyingly being torn down, mediums and genres are blending together, all to serve the story being told. It's not so much about trying to fit within a given space anymore. I say let's keep going in this direction. Let's keep embracing films that are taking risks despite them not being perfected. If film is a creative medium, we have to embrace openness and curiosity and rather create to discover than to impress. 
so stay curious and Man, I like Heineken. You like Heineken? Uh, well, I never really had Heineken before. You never had Heineken before? My dad drinks Bud. King of beers.